I thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's gathered out here this morning to worship you, Lord. I pray to God that you just be with each and every one of us, Lord. And if there's one here this morning, God, that's never called upon your name, Lord God, to be their perfect Savior, I pray to God that you convict their hearts this morning, God. I pray to God that you just send that old timey, Lord, conviction, God. And I pray to God that you just touch them and bless them, Lord God. Don't let them leave, Lord God, without acceptance. I pray to God that you just take us off and bless to your benefit, Lord. I pray to God that you just be with each and every one that's on the prayer list this morning, Lord. I pray, God, for the Osborne family this morning, Lord. We know those are hurting. I pray to God that you just touch them, Lord, be with them and comfort them, God. I pray, Lord God, for each and every other one, Lord, that's on the prayer list this morning, Lord. I don't know all of them, God, but you do. I pray to God that you just have all things and run your way in our hearts and in our life. We call it sweet and precious name. Amen. 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 Preaching services today, so everybody is welcome. Anybody's 
wants the help you're more than welcome to come and help too. We we could use the help. So, there's a whole lot of work goes on out there in that building. A whole lot of work. So, anybody that wants to help. Lots and can, lots and lots. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Shouldn't be more than welcome to come and help. So, and do let your kids come out and we'll have a good time, I promise. Uh, July 31st will be Youth Sunday. Also, July 31st, special office for building fund. July 31st through August 4th will be Johnson County Camp Meeting. August 7th will be Communion. Uh, August 14th, special office for youth group. Also, August 14th, business meeting. And August 28th, homecoming. And also, August 28th, special office for the building fund. Anything else? Is that it? That's it. We'll get into the prayer request. Uh, Ralph Meek, Diane Eisenhower, Riley Allen, Brooke Hutchinson, Tristan Madam, Kathy Woodard, Louise Markham, Joe Murray Bishop, Kevin Menard, Reason Family, Keith Harry, Chris Pleasant, David Wilson, Carter Harris, Kennedy Greer, Ashley White, Kate Porter, Jalen Sutherland, Daniel Furches, Danny McAuley, Mildred Pace, Jerry Duggar, Joanne Pope, Bob Eggers, Mary Bailey, Pitchtown Church, Clara Hurd, Lynn Courtner, Sanford Humphrey and Wife, Chuck Moorefield and Family, Wilma Payne, Andy Lowe, David Burnett, Ryan, Mike Reynolds, Holly McFadden, Eddie's Family, Ebenezer Christian Home, Walt Stout, Luella Dunn, Dennis and Hazel in the building, Danny Buchanan, Cindy White, Lucas Perdue, Laura Tressler, Bud Crosswhite, Harley Rankin, uh, Ben Bowers, Kenny and Jane Head, Ed Ham, Sandra Moorefield, uh, Austin Family, Francis Brooks, John Amy and the Boys, Rachel Marla, Chelsea Matson, Brenda Lunsford, Tyler and Shirley Ray, Eve Nice and Hiram Family, uh, Michelle Worley, or Baby, I'm sorry, Michelle Worley, David Ward, Terry Melissa, uh, Benji Watson, Anna Joe Shown, Joe Gold, Nina Moorefield, Avery King, Elaine Kirby, Aaron Steele, Randy Lewis, Emily Church, Brenda Moore, Buck Nett, Delmer, Wendell Caraway, Maria Jennings, Rick Stout, Kim Brady, Donnie Kim Garrett, Frank Johnson, Teresa McAuley, Margaret Eisenhower, Bob Miller, our church, John Yates, Joseph Rourke, Roy Barn family, and uh, uh, Dee said do pray for that family. Uh, Justin Miranda and kids, and Ruby Payne. Anybody else? Is that it? Any birthdays coming up this month or this week, this year? <laughs> no birthdays. Any? Your birthday? Huh? On the 19th. The 19th of July. That's two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. You said the month, son. I mean, I, I, I messed it all up, didn't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> It's your birthday this week? Peyton had one. You? No, mine's birthday. Birthday. Yeah, I messed up. I, I'm sorry, folks. See what you did. Yeah, I know that. I'm all deep. Hey, hey. I've done her. I've done her this morning and yesterday about tradition. So there we go. We we changed the tradition, and I've been fussed out about. You better say that. And I've been fussed out about tradition twice now. Amy said you're going to ask us to pray in the morning and Travis to pray in the service. That's why Jay had to pray this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Tradition. Anyway, any birthdays this week? Coming up this week? We good? Any anniversaries this week? All right, if ain't nothing else, we'll step out in aisles and have our morning fellowship. Uh, shake everybody's hand and tell you glad to see you, whether you mean it or not. That work? Yes. You good? Yeah. I'm going to do it. We got to do it I'm going to break you. Let them hear them
children's song that I want. And it's still true today for each and every one of us. God's still working on us. Amen. And that song is so true. Yeah. It's a children's song, but each and every day, if we're, if we're actually working yes. to serve God and put Him first, yes. uh, we're, in a sense, uh, I mean, God is God, but we have to communicate with our God. We've got to talk to our God. Yeah. And uh, you find times that, uh, 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 that you, you've done something wrong or something else, just slip away and talk to the Lord for a minute. Amen. If, 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 even if it's 15 seconds, you'll find that uh, God does a lot more if, if, if you're really seeking Him. Right. Amen. Appreciate that. Yeah, we need to have a conversation with the Lord because I like that song too. He's still working on me. Amen. You know what? And uh, I, I agree with that. He's still working on me. But he ought to have less to do today than he did yesterday. <laughs> Amen. His, his chore should be getting larger as the day goes on. <laughs> we ought to start looking more like him and acting more like him on a daily basis. And we appreciate that. Anybody else have something on your heart today? Hearts and minds is clear, and we'll open our Bibles up over the book of St. John, chapter number 8. St. John, chapter number 8, when you find your place, if you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. Be much in prayer for us as we stand today. We desire your prayers. Uh, do remember the cookout this afternoon. We'll be here. We'll try to be ready to eat right at 5 o'clock. We're going to try to come up a little early and get things ready. Uh, immediately after service, if uh, you would, we'll run out there and set tables and chairs up. Get that part done. That way we don't have to do it this afternoon. So, but uh, St. John chapter number 8. St. John chapter number 8. We're going to read it verse number 12. Bible says, And then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, God, as some of our sample for this. Thank you for another day and another opportunity, Lord, just to be in your house and in your presence. God, I thank you for each one that's gathered out. And I pray now, dear Lord, whatever the need is here today, God, you'll supply. You'll help me to get out of the way. And Lord, just use this whole body as a mouthpiece for you. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, for every burden, every trouble, every sorrow. God, every sickness, every ailment. God, every need that is here, Lord, you'll supply. I pray, God, for those on the prayer list. You know what's going on with them and their lives. Lord, you know those that are here, those, those that are not here today, dear God, and the reasons that they may not be here. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, you'll just touch, move, and guide in their lives and get them back here as soon as possible. And Lord, you'll help us to say something today, encourage somebody today. Most of all, Lord, that something might be said and draw them closer to the cross. Lord, open our minds and our hearts. Uh, that we're ready to receive that which you have for us. Lord, I know there's nothing that I can do on my own, uh, but with you all things are possible. Lead God and direct in the building of the church, and Lord, all the things that's happening, we give you the praise, the honor, the glory, not our will be done, but thine in Jesus. Bless your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know we know this this weekend. Uh, uh, tomorrow is Independence Day. I know that we look forward to that. And i just like to take just a moment. Not to, that's not our message this morning, but I'd just like to take just a moment to say how proud we are and thankful that we are that we live in this great land of the United States of America. Uh, we are privileged to be here. Not everybody uh, is afforded the same privileges that we have. Uh, we thank our men and women who have served and are serving. We have some that's even serving today. and uh, We appreciate all the work that they do. And 
Even though that uh, I was informed yesterday that uh, one of our servicemen uh, had it a lot easier than every, than everybody thinks he does. I, I mean, he's even getting his uh, getting his laundry steam pressed. Hey, man, I, I'm just kidding. She, she was telling me yesterday. She told Brand or just just enough to get used to get used to when he got home. Hey, man, uh, but I thank God for our men and women that serve, and thank God that we have this great country we live in. Uh, but you know we are afforded the not only ability to have uh, uh, the rights to be able to come out and worship and serve today, uh, uh, but we are we are so thankful that we have a heavenly Father that uh, has paid the ultimate price for us. Amen. And uh, He was willing to give His Son to die for us and uh, create that way of salvation for us. And if you've never experienced that. Uh, or never accepted that, I ask that you do that today. That's what our country was founded on, that you might be able to have a right to serve God. Amen. Uh, and I say here is that uh, is, uh, this boy put this thought on our hearts and on our minds and I know uh, uh, that in today's time, uh, and we look around, and I couldn't even uh, imagine uh, some of our service people today. Uh, I couldn't even imagine the disparity that they see in our country. Amen. Uh, it's easy to get discouraged. Uh, it's easy to look around and see how things uh, might be falling apart, or, or our things are not exactly the way they used to be. Amen. Uh, and I also can look back as I'm getting older in my life. Uh, I can look back at a time when we were a lot younger and growing up in this world that times were a whole lot different. Amen. Uh, I mean, people had a respect and a reverence for God, uh, uh, for church. And, you know, it's hard to look around and see that, that mo most people don't even have a uh, see the need of Jesus in their life. Amen. Uh, but I'll tell you, as dark as this day gets, uh, and as dark as this world might be turning, uh, Jesus said right here that He is the light. Amen. Uh, he is the light. And you know what that instructs us to be? He also told us... Uh, that ye are a light set upon a hill. So Jesus is living within us, and we are the light. Now, now, even though He's gone back to the Father, He left us here to shine. Now, and I'm going to tell you right now, if we don't get anything else out of the message today, realize that it is important for you, as a child of God, to let your light shine. Now, if you don't realize how important it is, you go, "Why? Well, what? Uh, what is the importance of it?" Now, well, listen. Now, I, there was a stage full of people uh, up here singing uh, little ones are singing uh, about God uh, about being in the Lord's party amen uh, there's little ones up here singing about how Jesus loves them uh, it's important that our light shine uh, for another generation amen uh, it's important that our light shine uh, that others might have the same ability uh, and the same knowledge uh, of Jesus, that they too can get saved. Amen. <coughs> we want them to be saved. We ought to be willing to do what it takes for them to be saved. Amen. Uh, we ought to be willing to go out of the way for them to be saved. And I think about the light. The Bible said here, Jesus told them. Uh, he said, I am the light of the world. Amen. I, I want us to understand some things about the light. Uh, he said, those that he that follows me shall walk what? God shall not walk in darkness. Uh, let me just tell you something here today. Uh, if today you are a child of God, uh, God didn't save you so you can go out there and live the same life that everybody else lives. Amen. Uh, he didn't save you to go out there and live the world the way the world lives. Uh, he saved you to be different. I'll tell you something about the light. Amen. Uh, there's some, one thing about the light. The Bible tells us here that He is the light. We'll not walk in darkness. Uh, but I was thinking about the light this week, and, and I can tell you the light one does one thing that it did very well. It reveals things that were hidden. Amen. I, I can tell you this for experience. Uh, hey, when Jesus comes into your life, uh, when you let the light of Jesus shine in, uh, it'll start revealing things in your life that you didn't even know was there. Amen. Uh, I think of the story here over in the book of Luke, chapter number 15. Uh, Bible 
Bible tells us that and the woman had ten pieces of silver and she lost one. Amen. I've preached on it many, many times before, I'm sure. Uh, about her losing that. Uh, hey, but do you know what she did uh, when she lost that piece of silver? Uh, you know what the Bible tells us that she did? Uh, she lit a candle. Amen. Uh, why did she light a candle? Uh, because she had lost it uh, and it was hidden from her uh, and she began to search for it. Uh, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to get your life right, uh, you want to know what's wrong in your life, uh, all you got to do is let the light shine. Amen. Uh, all you got to do is talk to Jesus. Ain't you glad when somebody told you about the Lord and it revealed unto you that you were lost? I'm glad that God reveals to us to know, hey, when we are doing wrong, why that we might be able hey, to get it right. You think the Lord shows you you're doing something wrong just for you to continue to do something wrong. That's the, I believe most of the world must think that way. I believe half the church must think that way. Amen. But here's what I can tell you. God reveals things unto us uh, that we might be able to get those things set right. That we might be able to get... I, I was thinking the other day, you know, I had a, I had a conversation with people all the time but, about, about uh, different things. But we're talking about some children, their children, and... You, you know, we live in a world today where people don't want to correct their children. Or they want to tell them to do the right thing and they expect them to do the right thing. I don't know about you, but I learned most of my lessons the hard way. Hey man, you want to know why I don't hit my thumb, don't purposely hit my thumb with a hammer? Because I've hit my thumb with a hammer and it don't feel too good. Hey man, uh, let me just tell you something. Uh, you tell a child you're going to spank them, uh, and then don't spank them. They don't know that that hurts, amen? Uh, but if you tell them you're going to whoop one, uh, and then you whoop one, amen, they know not to do that again uh, because of instruction, right? Uh, hey, let me tell you right now, I can remember looking back in our life. Uh, hey, I told you this on Wednesday night not too long ago, I believe. Uh, Hey, you we can all in here today uh, look back and remember when we was young. Uh, we thought we had the meanest parents around. Amen. Uh, we thought they whooped us for no reason. Uh, now we can look through life and look back on the times. Uh, I'll guarantee you that somebody right here today, uh, probably a majority of the people sitting in this house, uh, something's getting ready to come to your mind uh, that you got by with that you needed even more whoopings for. Amen. Uh, I can tell you, hey, we tell you to look at our life. Uh, hey, we one of the light reveals things. It'll show us things. God, listen. I promise you that He needs to shine down in our lives. Hey, that we not get burnt. That we may not get scorched. Hey, that we might not have to go to hell. I'm glad that God shows me what I'm doing wrong. That I might be able to get it right. Amen. That's why we instruct our children. That's why we train our children. Not just to punish them or to be mean to them. We want them to do the right thing because it's the right thing. Amen. Not, not because we're told to do the right thing, but because they do the right thing. Because they know that's what they're supposed to do. Hidden, the, the light reveals hidden things. Amen. You know, we can all fall short. We can all lose our way. We can all not know exactly which direction to go. It'll reveal things. Amen. Uh, you can see things shine. You ever seen? Here's what amazes me. No. My wife works in the bank, and y'all know anytime y'all take any money and of any size anymore, and you hand them something money, they'll take that. You ever seen them take a money just hold it up to the light? You're looking for something, ain't you? You know what you're looking for? They're looking to see what's on the inside. They're looking to make sure that strip's in there. Hey, man. They're looking in the inside. You know what the light will do? It'll reveal who's inside you. Hey, man. 
It'll reveal uh, if Jesus is there. Amen. Uh, I, the Bible tells us to try the spirits and see if they're God or not. Amen. Uh, hey, I tell you, we need to make sure uh, that the light reveals uh, and the light shines. It'll show you cracks. Uh, it'll show you where you've gotten away from God. Uh, it'll show you where you need to draw up. Uh, amen. It'll show you all sorts of things. You ever been somewhere inside of a building, inside of a, a, a place somewhere, and you see light shining in a place that shouldn't be shining in? Because there was a crack or a crevice or a hole there. Do you know what the Word of God is? It's like a light on us. It shows us a lamp unto my feet. A light under my path, what it said in the book of Psalms. So, you know what? It'll shine in and it'll show us where the cracks and crevices are in our life. That word's important. Now, hey, the light of God's important. I tell you what else it does. Uh, you know what the light does? Uh, we also have a light for, for the, uh, it warns us against danger. Amen. Uh, it tells us when trouble's coming. Uh, it tells us when we ought to be cautious. Uh, it tells us when we ought to stop. Uh, they tell us when we ought to go. Amen. Uh, now, granted, a lot of people have got those things messed up. Uh, I tell people all the time about a stoplight. Amen. Uh, I know what some of you think that yellow light means. Means, amen. Uh, it means give it the gas before the red light catches you. Amen. Uh, that's what most of us do in our Christian life as well. Amen. Uh, hey, when we get warning signs from God, uh, hey, those lights are made to give us direction. Uh, hey, it's time to slow down. Amen. Uh, it's time to stop. Uh, hey, uh, and it's time to go. Uh, hey, before Diddy blows the horn at you, go. Amen. Uh, before those lights are for. You know the light shines in our life, and God, if we let the light shine in our life, God will kill us where we're supposed to be. I told during Sunday school, Melissa and I was watching a show yesterday, I think yesterday, and I heard a guy say, tell him, he was talking to a lady in the church, and he told her this. He said, we're all sent, it's just a matter of what. I said, man, that's good. You know what? The Bible tells us that we're all sent. Where it's all our job to do something. You know what our problem is? We're sitting there at the red light, sitting there at the stoplight. It's done turned green, uh, and then we're just still sitting there. Does that not aggravate you? Does it not make you mad when you're sitting there? I know the first thing somebody wants get off that stupid phone. Get off that stupid phone and hang up and drive. I don't want to have many times, but I'm glad y'all said that. I'm glad y'all answered that way. We're on the same track this morning. I wonder how many times God said, hang up and go witness. Hang up and go pray. Hang up and go read the Bible. Uh, hey, I wonder how many times uh, we've been sent, uh, but we're standing there at the green light, uh, just like everybody else in traffic, amen. Uh, hey, I tell you, let the light shine in your life. Uh, hey, you might know where to go. Uh, you may know when to slow down and when to just halt. Amen. When to stop. Not continuing to go when God says stop is just as bad as sitting there at the green light. If not worse. If you sit there at the green light, you know what's going to happen? Diggy's going to have immoral thoughts. <laughs> you know what happens? You know what happens? If you keep going when the light is red, lives get lost. Amen. Look, God tells us when to go. He tells us when to slow down. He tells us when to stop. It warns us against danger. I think a lot of times, I mean, listen, I, we, if we go anywhere that has lighthouses, we always have to visit the lighthouse. Even if it's not worth visiting, we visit the lighthouse. But here's what amazes me about lighthouses. I know we live in a, a, a new age, in a new era. Technology. We've got GPS and all this bunch of junk. But do you know what? There's still nothing like a light on the corner to show you whether you need to go or stop. Amen. Go or stop. Amen. Uh, and it amazes me about those lighthouses. It's built on those rocks. Uh, built on those cliffs. Uh, built out there white. 
that they might warn travelers of, of rocks and coastlines. Amen. Uh, that they might be able to see a sign uh, out from the middle of a storm in the middle of the sea. Uh, that they might be able to see that light uh, and get a little glimpse of hope. Amen. Uh, hey, or get, get to see that light out there uh, and know that they're about to head to trouble. Uh, hey, let me just tell you something, Christian. Uh, we ought to live our lives and the light shines uh, on a daily basis. Uh, hey, because if you don't, uh, then I'll tell you what, uh, there's going to be people crash into the shore, people crash into the rocks, because they were looking to you and doing the same thing we were doing. Amen. Amen. It warns us. Warns us. God gives us warnings about those things. So what else the light does? It reveals what is in the darkness. Amen. It'll reveal things that you never worried. We always said about how it reveals hidden things. But without light, you know what happens? It just keeps getting darker and darker. Has anybody ever been to a place where there was zero light? Now, I ain't talking about in your bedroom tonight and the lights off and the blinds closed. I remember many, many years ago, I was doing a job over in Abilene, Virginia. And I was on the elevator. And, that, and this was in the late afternoon. Was the one other person on the job. I was in the elevator by myself, and the power went off in between floors. I want to tell you something. Listen, I wasn't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not scared of the dark. Amen. I, I don't sleep with the night light on. But here's what I can tell you: when there ain't no light whatsoever. And you ain't know what you can't see. I mean, you can't see your hand in front of your face. That's complete darkness. There's a weird feeling. Amen. There's a strange feeling. I'm glad to know that I live in a day and a time in the country. Hey, why well, there's still light being shown, amen? Because without light, without Him, I'd be in complete darkness. And I'll tell you what, it's a scary place. That lasted for about 10 minutes. If it lasted about 11 or 12, I might have got plumb crazy, amen? I was done looking and scratching and trying to find a way out. Thank God hey, that He turned the power back on. Ain't you glad to know that the light shining today? Hey, we don't have to worry about what's in the dark. Amen. Amen. What a God we have. Get rid of that thing. You know what God does with light? He gives direction. You ever seen an arrow on the road? Go this way. Don't go that way. God uses it for direction. You know what? I remember a long time ago. I had an old truck. I'm working for North I had an old truck, and you don't have to have stuff on work nobody. And I was doing a night shift job. And the headlights on this thing was, I mean, it was bad shape. They were just half work anyway. I mean, it was dim. And come around that lake every night, I mean, it's bad. And I was coming around that lake one night. I mean, I couldn't see. I mean, it's raining. And it's dark. And I couldn't see nothing. I thought, man, these lights have plumb about went out. And I got out, and there was some crazy electrician. And they had put duct tape over every bit of that light except one little strip right in the center. I, I mean, I said, man, I couldn't stand that. I got to thinking about that this week, about how sometimes we let the world. We let the world put this to cover up the light that we have. And all we got is a little bit of your light shining out. Barely have enough for us to see. Barely have enough for us to find the direction that we need to go in. Now, hey, it'd been easy for a man to, hey, to run the ditch, to hit another car, hit something else. Hey, it's important that the actions that we have, hey, it's important that we let God guide us. Hey, that we might be able to see that way, shouting out how we might be able to lead others in the direction of the cross. It's important, hey, that we know the way, but it's important, hey, that we see the way that we're directed by God. Amen. Who we let direct us in our lives? Who we let direct us in our lives? 
Let me tell you. It's important to know where the source of power comes from. Amen. It's important to know where we're getting the juice from. Now look. We plug things into the wall sockets at our homes. We expect them to work, don't no. we? Huh? When you plug something up, you know what you say you got confidence in? That the power companies will give you power. Look, we ought to have the same confidence in our Lord and Savior. Where have enough confidence in God? That's where our strength comes from. That's where our help comes from, not from the power company, but it comes from God. It comes from on high. It comes from the one that's proven. It comes from the one that tried, that has been uh, uh, that has been determined. It comes from the one that has been tried over and over and over again and proven to be effective. The Bible tells us He'll never leave us. He'll never let us stand. He'll never leave us out. Amen. I can tell you, there's some things out there that we can sh- that doubt. There's some things out there that we might give up on. Hey, but He's the one that'll never. Let you down. Now, there's some things that hinder the light. Amen. There's some things that hinder the light, and you know what that is? It's the source. Amen. If your source is plugged into the wrong thing, or if you're plugged into the good source and you let interference get in the way. Amen. Low batteries. I remember years ago. Y'all remember them flashlights that you used to shake that little generator in? How many of y'all like them things? You know why you didn't like them? Because you had to do the work. I'm just telling you. You know what happens in our life? When we don't work a little bit, the light begins to go bigger. Amen? It's all fun and easy. It's all fun when it's easy. But I tell you, when it gets a little tough, when it gets a little hard, amen, and things get rough. But did you know when I found out the light shines brighter? When you work a little harder, amen. Uh, you work a little harder, that light will shine brighter. Uh, hey, God will just give you more juice. Uh, he'll give you more energy. Uh, that's why it's important. Uh, you know something else that'll hinder that? Uh, just like I mentioned about them taping up them headlines. Uh, hey, when you cover up the light, it'll hinder the work that you do. Uh, it'll hinder the light that's produced. Uh, it's important that we keep ours unhid. Uh, Bible tells us that uh, don't uh, what man lights a candle uh, and put it under a bushel. Hey, look, you don't do those things. You light that candle, you put it on a stick. Hey, you put it out for everybody to see. I say it's time. No time to give up. Hey, but it's time to start shining. Brighter and brighter. Matthew tells us, Paul tells us, you're set on a hill. Hey, I say shine bright. Every head bowed, never eye closed, every Christian praying, every heart searching. Let me ask you, are you letting your light shine today? Are you letting it burn bright? I hope today that everybody's saved and ready to go. I hope that others can see the light of Jesus in your life. But if you're here today and you've never been saved, would you be honest with yourself and honest with God? Just slip your hand up, put it right back down, say, pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, I'm not really sure. I don't know whether I'm saved or not. Would you pray for me? Slip your hand up. Put it right back down. Say, pray for me. Pray for me. I'm just here to pray for you. I'm not here to call you out. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, I know what I'm saved. But I'm not shining like I should. Would you slip your hand up. Put it right back down. Amen. 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 God sees those hands today. Amen. Amen. Let me just tell you something. Power source has not changed. He's not charging you anymore. Maybe you're here today, maybe you raised your hand, maybe you didn't. You want to slip out of that pew, you want to get up here, you want to get back where you used to be. You want to pray and ask the Lord to help you be what you should be. Maybe you're here today, maybe you got a burden on your heart. Maybe you got something going on you need some help with. You just stick your hand up and say, pray for me. Pray for me. Amen. 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 God sees all those hands today. I want you to know today that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
The same God that parted the Red Sea. The same God that closed the mouths of the lions. The same God that defeated the giant in the valley. The same God that saved your soul. He's here today to help you. He sees your foot. Make your petitions known unto Him. This altar's open for anyone for any reason. If you're here today, you need to come. You want to come. Would you come? She's going to play one more verse, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I hope today that everybody's saved and ready to go. I hope you know the Lord is your Savior. I hope you know God is your helper. And I hope you know to put your trust in Him. And whatever you're going through, I can't promise you things will be turning out exactly the way you want. But I can tell you God's got this. He's got this. Nothing's caught him by surprise. Anybody else want to come before we pray? Hearts, minds, what a Savior. What a Savior. Brother Travis, you pray for us. Lord, those that maybe do not raise your hands, but still need to. Pray God. Thank you, pray. Bless you for your name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We appreciate you. Maybe somebody today's got a word on your heart or testimony. Hearts and minds clear. Do remember this afternoon, five o'clock, we'll be having a cookout here at the church out in the pavilion. We have some uh, different games and things lined up. Uh, also, uh, if you're not into games, uh, I'll take the buck will take you down to the church and let you work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, we do appreciate you. We got all kinds of fun and good family fun and cook out coming. Remember, come back out, tell somebody about the Lord. Shake somebody's hand, baby. Love you, God bless. You.